So ahead of WWDC 2025, Apple's already showcased some of the new features we can expect with iOS 19. And specifically, these are new accessibility features we should see. So the first thing is improvements to personal voice. This was a feature that Apple introduced a few years ago, where you could use your iPhone to create a synthesized voice that sounds similar to your actual voice for those in risk of losing their ability to speak. And now apparently Apple's made this faster and easier to use on iOS 19 thanks to the power of AI. So yes, now you should be able to create a smoother, more natural sounding voice in less than a minute, down from 15 minutes, and it should overall give you a better experience. That's nice to see. We should also see upgrades to iPhone's music haptics feature. This was introduced in iOS 18, and basically the haptic engine of the iPhone vibrates to match the audio of a song playing in Apple Music, and now apparently you can customize it and can choose to only receive haptic feedback for the vocals and also adjust the overall intensity of the vibration. There are a bunch of other features as well Apple introduced, but another key upgrade with accessibility is now being able to connect your iPhone to a Mac and using that as a magnifier. Now let's talk about battery life, because if you want your iPhone lasting longer, apparently Apple is going to fix your battery life issues using the power of AI. This Loki sounds like a scam, but anyway, in iOS 19, Apple plans to launch an AI-powered battery management option that will analyze how you use your device and make adjustments accordingly to cut down on battery usage. There will also be a new lock screen indicator that shows you how long it will take you to charge your iPhone, which is a basic feature Android phones have offered for years, but now using the power of Apple intelligence, it's on iOS. Wow, clearly you need the power of AI to do this. Anyway, this new AI battery management feature allegedly was designed with the iPhone 17 Air in mind, which we've heard may not have excellent battery life, and so let's see if AI can save this phone. Now what's interesting is that all devices running iOS 19 is getting this, not just the devices that run Apple Intelligence. I was expecting this to be an Apple Intelligence exclusive, considering Apple is going to be using the Apple Intelligence branding. So it's going to be a bit confusing that some Apple Intelligence features are available on all devices, but others are only available on newer devices. But anyway, it's great that Apple's blessing everyone with better endurance. You know what you could bless me with though? Clicking that subscribe button, of course. It's free and would bring you the latest about Apple right to the subscription box, so please consider it. It would be appreciated. Join the Surround by Gang now. Gurman also in this new report does say Apple is pushing engineers to make this update more functional and less glitchy, which is good to hear considering in recent years, iOS has become less stable. And I think more than new features people want stability with iOS. Moving on, if you've ever wanted Apple to offer something similar to Samsung DeX on the iPhone, we have news we could get just that with iOS 19. According to Majumbu, stage managers coming to iPhones with the USB-C port. Right now, plugging your iPhone gives you a very basic version of screen mirroring. Basically, what you see on the iPhone is projected on the monitor. And so even a cut down version of stage manager would be a massive upgrade. And I know some might say, what is the point of this? Well, for those who want to get some work done, plugging your iPhone into a monitor and quickly getting access to a desktop-like experience would be clutch. Actually, hypothetically, since the Emsos chipsets are just beefier iPhone chips, Apple could quite easily let the iPhone run macOS when plugged into a monitor, but obviously they're not going to do that. They wanted to buy new Macs, and so we're getting this in-between option with Stage Manager. But as I said, if this turns out to be true, this would be a big upgrade over the current screen mirroring interface. Moving on to iPadOS 19, Lika Majumbu reports the iPads could get a menu bar similar to macOS when using the Magic Keyboards. That's the top portion of your Mac where you can get access to quick toggles for the UI and the application you're currently using. Mark Gurman actually said Apple's aim this year was to make iPadOS more like macOS and then said there'll be three main changes, improved productivity, improved multitasking and improved app window management which was quite a vague list of changes. What does improved productivity even mean? Thankfully, Lika Majumbu is more specific and tells us we should see a new menu bar as well as a seamless version of Stage Manager, which sounds interesting. Maybe the current version of Stage Manager comes to iOS and iPadOS gets a beefed up version that's more similar to macOS. But I'll be honest, the list of changes people want to see with macOS will be so vast that Apple's just better off putting macOS on the iPads. For example, with improved multitasking and app window management, many would just want Apple to ditch Stage Manager on the iPads and bring the window system macOS has. And so for eventually going to get to a point where iPadOS is becoming more like macOS, you might as well throw macOS on this. 
Another aspect that many would like Apple to change with iPadOS is the files that, for example, it's not great. And so adding Finder that macOS has to the iPad would be great, which is why, again, it's easier to just chuck macOS onto this. I know not everyone uses the iPad as a laptop replacement, and so Apple could make this an option where you can dual boot iPadOS and macOS. So yeah, I don't see the point in iPadOS 19 slowly becoming more like macOS. And also, as I said, we do hear such things every year. It feels like ever since we saw M1 come to the iPad Pro, we've been waiting for Apple to do something with all this power, but they've been slow to give us any new software features. And so I would keep expectations though, guys. iPadOS already is getting a design overhaul, which I'll delve later into. And so I wouldn't be surprised if functionally it's not very different. But if Apple does want to bless us with a meaningful change, just give us macOS on the iPads. Now let's talk about the redesign coming to iOS 19 and by extension iPadOS 19 because we have new renders that show us the UI overhaul to expect. So earlier John Prosser showed us the redesign camera UI, the new lock screen where the notifications are more translucent and there's a more 3D floating look for the toggles, settings and pop-ups with a more glassy aesthetic imitating Vision OS, and a redesigned keyboard where it almost creates this illusion of it floating but I'll be honest, I was expecting a bit more, and thankfully John Prosser now shares more renders that show us more drastic visual changes. And namely, we see circular icons in these new renders, which have been taken directly from Vision OS. John Prosser actually first told us in the build he saw he couldn't see evidence of rounder icons. However, it seems Apple is hiding this element because in current builds, if you long press on a square call icon, it then becomes rounder after a brief animation. Maybe Apple's hiding new icons in builds to prevent leaks, but clearly that plan has failed because because it has leaked and so Tim's gonna be very angry. But I like the look of this. Yes, it's just differently shaped icons and doesn't functionally add anything whatsoever, but I'm always down for visual changes that are executed well, and this looks clean in my opinion. Apple could of course give consumers a choice, and similar to Android devices, it would be nice if you could switch between square cool and circular icons, but this is Apple we're talking about. They want design consistency, and so I'm expecting everyone to be forced to use these new icons, whether you like it or not. But personally, I'm not against that because these new icons are very cool. Another UI change to expect is a pill-shaped tab bar at the bottom of many of Apple's first party applications. You can see how it looks. And it seems Apple is going to prioritize putting a lot of tabs towards the bottom of the device, which is great for reachability, especially for those using the Pro Max and having to do hand gymnastics right now to reach some areas of the UI. Also, Apple's rounding off everything. So if you long press on an app, the menu that comes up is rounded now. There's new sliders for volume and brightness in the control center. And also the settings app now has slimmer toggles. There's also a subtle lighting effect to some elements that help create this glass-like appearance. So for example, the flash showing camera controls on the lock screen shimmer as you move your iPhone phone, which sounds pretty cool. So overall, I actually love this. Yes, I'm an Apple sheep who's quite easily impressed by new fancy icons, but iOS has looked the same for a while, and so I'm glad to see a visual overhaul that will make your iPhone feel fresh. But let's be honest, I do have a feeling Apple's giving us this major overhaul to distract us from the fact Apple intelligence Siri features have been delayed, but honestly, it's a good distraction because whilst AI features in iOS may eventually get useful, they certainly aren't a must have right now, whereas design changes to the UI is something you would appreciate every single day. Let's now move on to devices which will run iOS 19 and iPadOS 19 this year, and unfortunately, there is bad news. So because iOS 19 is going to be such a substantial update, Apple does apparently plan to drop the iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR according to a credible anonymous source. These devices were released back in 2018, and so they've had roughly six years of support, and so I'm not too surprised by this news. The especially only has three gigs of RAM, so for those still using those devices, just be aware your device may lose support soon. Now obviously that does not make them instantly unusable, Apple still does release security updates for devices on older iOS versions, and so you could theoretically keep using these phones for a little longer, but eventually apps will stop supporting iOS 18, and you're going to be missing out on newer iOS features you would want to try out. Now moving on to iPadOS 19, Apple plans to only drop the iPad 7th generation, which has the A10 Fusion from 2016. That's a crazy old chipset, so that makes sense. But what's funny is that the iPad 8 generation, which has the A12 that Apple's dropping from the iPhone range, is still going to be supported. This has already happened in the past because the iPhone 7, which had the A10, did not get iPadOS 16, but the iPad 7 with the same chipset got iPadOS 16, 17, and 18. So it seems Apple's happy supporting these iPads for longer because they did launch a couple of years after these iPhones. Does that mean theoretically the iPhone 10 and 10s could run iOS 19? 
Maybe, but the iPad 7 generation was very sluggish on iPadOS 18, and so there's a possibility the iPad 8 generation is going to suffer on iPadOS 19. We will have to wait and see. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you for watching.